Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Someone asked me on my YouTube channel, how can I use the filter function in Excel and do a wildcard search? So I'm going to cover that uh, in my list of items I'm going through with the filter function, but I'm going to run through all of these real quick. The filter function works only in Office 365 and it is a dynamic array function. So let me give you an example of what that means. I'm going to start off just finding text. If you notice, I have departments in column C. I want to only see people that are in HR as an example. So equals filter. The array. I picked up B4 to D14. So the first argument was my array. The second argument is what is it you're looking for? What do you want to include? I'm trying to find out if the department and I'm highlighting the range, equals, I believe I said HR. It is not case sensitive. doesn't matter how you put in HR. The third argument is an optional argument. I don't need it. It says if empty right there. So I'm going to backspace. I don't need it. So I'm already good. So I should get listed automatically without any autofill. Every employee that's in HR. And there they are. What's cool about the filter function is I'm in F4. Up in the formula bar is the function I just used. If I go to cell F5 or over into G, notice that the formula bar is empty. Well, it's not empty, but it's grayed out. So you can't delete from here. You can only delete from F4. So there was my text example to start off with. Just to cover this, if you're using text and you want to reference a cell, I don't I didn't give myself a lot of room to work here. Let's put department here. Department HR. So it's cell K1 that has the department in it. When you're running through the formula, instead of having to type in HR, I can reference K1. So there's HR. Let's test it. Let's make this training. They all change the training. One more test. Let's make it production. And there's production. So that's working. Uh, number two is let's do this with numbers. So I'm going to get rid of this. Here I go from scratch. I want to see any salary. I put in some salaries in column D over 35. So filter the range or array. I want to include, I'm going to highlight the salaries. I want to do greater than or equal to 35. Again, if empty, I'm not going to use in this example. There they are. Let's test it real quick. Highlight, conditional formatting. You probably should know this already. Top and bottom rules. I'm sorry, highlight sales rules greater than 35. So that worked. Oh, I'm going to redo. Watch this. If I change one more, let's make Amy in accounting. Let's give her 37. She should show up over in the filter list. Let's see if she does. And there she is. I'm going to undo and I'm going to clear out the conditional formatting. All right, so that was numbers. Uh, watch this one, very similar. I want to see any salaries over the average. This is pretty cool. So filter, my range, comma. What do you want to include? I want to include the salaries, but I want to include them if they're greater than or equal to the average function. And then again, I'm highlighting the salaries. So there's your function right there. I should get everyone over the average. Let's see if this is correct. I've got four numbers again just to check it. Over the average that would be top and bottom rules above the average. Those four numbers equal those four. One more test. I'm going to change 33. Sue in production. Let's give her um, 42 and she joins the list over the average and conditional formatting shows that too. 
In case you're wondering what is the average, you highlight the salaries. Down in the bottom, some count, there's average. The average is 35 for this range of numbers, so it is working. I'm going to go give Sue 29, and she disappeared. So that's working. I'm going to clear the conditional formatting. So that was over the average. If I wanted less than the average, there is less than average right there in the formula bar and in cell F4 right there. Oh, this is a cool one. I want to know the large. I'm just going to stay here and just tweak the formula so I don't have to sit here and type it again. So B4 to D14, I highlighted the salaries. I want to see, I'm making this up, I want to see the top three salaries. So still greater than or equal to, I'm going to throw in the large function. The large function has two arguments. What is it I'm looking for? The array. Comma, the letter K is what large are you looking for? I'm looking for the top three, so I'm going to do the number three. So I should end up with only three records here. And I do. I've got Karen, Hector, and Dalton. Let's see if that's right with just a quick sort. Let's do a sort. Largest to smallest, 60, 45, and 40. It's working. I'm going to go change Barry, who's working in production, to the number 62. Barry joins the list in my filter list. So there is large. Opposite of large would be the small function. I want to see the lowest three. So I'm changing large to small, but I did less than or greater than. There are the lowest three. Tricky one here, I want to do an and. So let's say I want to see people that are in training. I told us, let's stay with HR, two less letters. I want to see people that are in training and their salary is over 35. So let me do this one. So equals filter, my range, I'm doing an and. I like to work from left to right, so I'm going to do the department first. I believe we said equals HR. Just so you know this, I think I need to put that in an open parenth. And then I did the multiplication or times. And then I want to do the salaries. So to do an and with the filter function, you do the star, you do the second range. And I believe I said this is going to be greater than 35. Perfect. Right there. Hector. Hector is correct. Real quick. Um, to show you this, data, Z to A, A to Z. So for HR, yep, Hector is on over 35. Let's test this. 41. Mary joins the list. There is that formula again right there. There is your AND criteria. To do an OR, I'm looking for people in HR. I'm also looking for people in training. So I'm going to just edit this formula. Let's just do this. It becomes a plus symbol. Plus this range equals training. So I've got HR and I've got training. Let's test this real quick. Let's make this person production. And they disappeared from my list. So I have three people in HR and I've got three over to the left. And I got three people in training and I got three over to the left. If I make this person training, I should end up with seven records and I do. Right there is your OR function. I did a plus symbol and added that one on there. The search function, I'm going to do last, but here's the spill function. I'm going to just copy this so I don't have to type it again. And then I'm going to delete it. Let's say I have data here. 
down below here. And I come up to cell F4, want to do the filter function. And again, I'm just going to paste it in there. That is called a spill error, meaning it wants to fill in. It's a dynamic function. It wants to fill down, but it can't because you have data in the way. So I have an option over here. Spill range isn't blank is what it's telling me. Help on this error. Select the cells that are obstructing it. So that's what I'm going to do. I look at them and say, I don't need them. Watch what happens when I press delete. It spills down. There's the formula right there. So that's spill. So here comes the tricky one. <clears throat> I want to search for training. I want to search for production. Someone said I wanted to do a wild card with the filter function. I thought, well, that sounds easy. Filter. Select your range. Comma. What do you want to include? I'm looking for production. So I thought I would just come in here and do P-R-O-D, wildcard search. And I guess this can't be that hard, except you get a calculation error. I tried a couple other things, I just couldn't get it to work. So here's the only thing I can get to work. This is a little unusual. So equals filter, still got the range included. I'm going to do an is number function. Then I'm going to add the search function, which searches. What are you looking for? PR, I'm looking for production. I'm going to just do PRO, just PRO. That works. Comma, where are you going to find PRO? I'm going to find it inside of this range right here. That should give me production. And it did. There is that formula to do a search inside of a filter function. I used is number with the search function. And by the way, you can still reference a cell right here that I just selected PRO. That will work. Uh, let me test it real quick. Let's reference cell K1. HR shows up, but HR is in here. Let's just type in PRO. There's production, P-R-O-D. In case you're wondering why in the world would I want to do that search, let's say somebody's over here filling in this data and is spelling out production. They want to do P-R-O-D period. And then somebody else does P-R-O-D. I misspelled it intentionally in cell C7, but it's still at least showing me what I'm looking for. Last thing I didn't show you is, let me get rid of this. This is going to be real simple. I didn't show you the filter. I'm going to highlight. I'm making this up. I'm looking for the department. Um, I'm looking for the department customer service. There is not a department customer service. So when I highlight department equals, I'm going to reference the cell, comma, if empty, what do you want to do? I'm going to return a blank, but I, a blank would be right here. But I want to say department not listed. Department not in range here. That works. So let's test this. ACCT working. Uh, training working. I come in and type in customer service, department not in my range. So that is that third argument with the filter function. It is the optional argument and it says if empty, if I wanted to return something else, a blank would have been this right here. There you go. I appreciate your time. Um, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel just to let you know what's coming up. I'm going to combine the dynamic array functions, which I just did with filter. We've got filter, which I've covered before, but this is a more detailed filter video. We have sort. I've done a video on sort. We have sort by. We have unique. Um, and there are other dynamic array functions. Here we go, right here. I'm going to combine, for example, sort with filter, sort by with filter. I'm going to cover the unique function again. Um, 
So I'm going to start doing these dynamic array functions nested within each other. Anyway, I appreciate your time. Feel free to use the comments. Feel free to subscribe. Have a great weekend. Thank you.